Alright, so on to part 4. Um, I wanted to fix something right quick. If you look at the chrome pieces right here, they look fine. But if you render, you'll see this black mark through here. Now this is my own fault for not rendering as I do stuff. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open it up. It's a real quick fix, so we're just going to select this line, hide unselected, and go to F3 wireframe mode and zoom in just a little bit on it and you can see here that these polys are closed in together all we have to do is lift them up and, and that'll fix it so I'll come in here like so and I'll select one of these vertexes and I'll go ahead and lift it up and see if that helps any of course I can't really see very well let me back up and it starts getting rid of that black mark. So let me move this down, move this up, and see if this is actually helping. If I'm moving it the right way. And you see it that it is. So if you want to, what you can do is just go all the way around like so and bring these vertices back down to where they're supposed to be. Okay, and that clears that up. We'll have to do that for the other ones also. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention right quick before you um, freak out and go, why is this rendering black? That's why. So that's a good reason to render after you model something. But as you see, it's a quick fix too, so don't freak out. If I go ahead and render this, I get black, and that's because I'm not inside here. And see it's better now. So we have to do that on the other sides too, but we'll we'll do that later. Or I'll do it later and what you can do is fix it on your own time also. So now what we're gonna do is create our rug, our coffee table, maybe an end table with a lamp and our picture frame, and pretty much call this interior um done for now as far as modeling goes, and then we'll move on to texturing and then finally rendering. Let me go into my top view. What I'm gonna do is make a rug and then we'll do the coffee table on top of it. So let's go to standard primitives and go to extended primitives. Go to chamfer box and I want the rug to be about the same size as the couch but not not quite so we'll say between the cushions is how big the rug will be. So I'll come out here like so. Fairly decent rug like that. Unclick, lift up to give it some height, click it again and then move up a little bit to give it some fillet right click to end the tool and come back in here to see what we've done just like that a little thick for a rug for me so what I'm going to do is come in here and lower the height down some and it still has if we hit F4 and bring up all that it still has all of the um, you know the segments from what we've what we've done earlier with all of our chamfer boxes um, I'm going to keep this the way it is right now. I think let me hit F4, just to make sure it's not too thick. I still think it's a little bit too high, so I'll bring it down some more. Then I'll right-click it and convert it to an editable poly. Hit F4. What I'll do is I'll come in here, right here on the edges like so, and kind of just, you know, bring in some of these vertexes uh, so that it's not looking completely, um, you know, rectangular kind of give it some, maybe up here in the corner it, it's popping up some. Just like that. We'll do. I'm just giving it a little bit of a look. Nothing, nothing too great. Alright, next thing. Go back to the top view. We'll name this rug. All right, click off of that, and what we'll do now is the, let me see if I have it up. I don't have it up, so we'll not worry about it. We're going to make the coffee table. So I'm going to go into standard primitives, and it was, if you remember, it was a pretty sharp, a sharp image, so I'm just going to create a box right quick. I'm going to do the side of it. Fairly thin, not too thick. Give it some height. Come back into here. I want to bring this 
up so it's sitting right on the rug. I don't want it as tall as the couch, so I'll bring the height up just a smidge more, about one and seven eighths, just like that. And that seems fairly thick enough. That's nice. All right, let's give it some length segments and some height segments, just like that. Or, or let's not do that. We'll do it. We'll do it this way. Convert it to an editable poly. What we're going to do is come on this side. Let's actually lift it up off this so I can see all the edges. Click these edges right here and do a connect. We're going to do two. And let's see if I can bring them closer together, like so. Use the pinch right here, and that brings them in closer. We'll say about 65 is good. Just like that. And then I'll, with those selected, I'll just hit Control and select these. And I'll hit Connect for two. Keep the pinch the same. And there we go. On the polygons, I'll go ahead and select these right through here. And do an extrude. Um, we'll say that's good right there. Not too bad. Now with this, I'll come up here and hit the Mirror tool. Move this out of the way so I can see it. Do it on the x-axis. We're going to do a copy and hit OK. Go to the top. And I'll bring this over to right about here. About the same distance. We're going to take this edge of the rug to this and the edge of the rug to this. So right about there. All right. We're going to group this at the end, so don't worry about naming it. It's all going to be one solid color. So go to our top viewport. We're going to create another box. And about right here. Give it a little height. Come here. Lift up. And on. We want it that thick. down like that. On. Get in really close to see if it's on there. Just like that. All right. And there is a coffee table. I'm going to control select these. I'm going to hit group and call it coffee table. I might even scale this down just a smidge together and in like that and then bring it down to there. There. Suits me just fine. Let me open this right quick. Looks like the top's just a little bit off. Select the top part right here. Bring it over some. and then close it. And then we have our coffee table. Not too bad. <coughs> Not too bad at all. Now let's move on to the end table. We're going to come over here, kind of create the same thing, but not exactly. Actually, let's go to our coffee table right quick. I see something I want to change. Let's open it. I want to select the leg and actually just bring it in just a little bit and then close it. So that way it's not over the edge and it's inside just like this one. Let's go over here and make our end table. We'll do it with a box also. And that's good. Give it some height. End table will be a little bit taller. Hit Z to zoom in on it. It's going to be a little bit taller than the other one because it is an end table after all. So it's got to kind of come up to about where the um, armrest would be. It doesn't have to be exactly to the top, but close enough. And we're going to bring this into the middle, about right here. And I'm just looking at my coffee t or my end table right now. OK. 
and that actually looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to convert that to an editable poly. I'm going to select this, and I'm actually going to ring it, and then hit connect. Hit 2. Bring my pinch in to about, what was that other one, 65. Okay, 65. It's like so. All right. And then I'm going to ring this. I'm going to connect it with the same. Actually, let's not do that because one side is higher than the other one. So let's just manually select these. Hit connect. Hit OK. Bring these up just a tad. And then on this side, select these four. Hit connect. And bring these down some. Like that. Like so. And what we'll do is go to Polygon, select this, oops, select this, looks good to me, and hit Extrude, like so. Make sure it's on Group, just like that, and hit OK. Now that way it has, um, you know, it's stable. It's not just one little piece in the middle. I go ahead and bring the whole thing down so that it's touching the floor. I don't want it to intersect all the way. Okay, and then the top, we can just make a new box. A little bit of an overhang. Not much. Use your own judgment. Or look at the pick. Give it some height. Come back into here. Bring it up. Make sure that sits down on it, like that. Give the height on it, lower it down a little bit more. Kind of about the same way the coffee table is. And then we'll, since I selected, we'll control click this one and we'll group and call this in Lord of Mercy, in table. All right, so we have that. So we have a coffee table, we have our rug, we have our end tables. Now what we're going to do now is model the lamp. So I'm actually going to keep this and I'm going to hide everything else by right-clicking and select hide unselected. And I'm going to go to my, mm, let's go to left view. It doesn't really matter. We're going to do a rectangle. Actually right click and we're going to undo enable and render and enable and viewport. Let's do the rectangle again. Right up to here. Like so. There we go. I'm going to right click it. Go to Convert to Editable Spline. Come down here, select the spline. Go to Outline. And outline it in like so. Just like that. Come over here to the Modifier list and hit Extrude. Give it a little bit of an amount like that. perspective and actually put it over here. It's very thick so what I want to do is just bring it in like so, like that. Not too bad. Okay, I'm going to right click that and just convert it to an editable poly. I'm going to scale it in just a little bit more. And if we want to, we can select these vertices right here and bring them down some select these vertices right here, bring them up some, like that. And if you want to, we can make it a little bit thicker. All right. Nothing's ever set in stone unless it's very complicated. Otherwise, you can fix it really easy. 
So no big deal. Now what I'm going to do is create the base for it by getting just a regular box. Giving it some height also. Coming over here to perspective, bringing it up. When you're making these things too, you'll have to realize what the camera is going to see. Because if your camera's not going to, if you're never going to zoom in on anything, you never have to put any um, unnecessary detail in. But if you wanted to, we could select these nice little edges right here and do a chamfer on them, like so. We could get to polygon, sub-object mode, do that under there, do an inset, and do an extrude. Just bring it out like about so. And we have this crazy little base like that. Then we bring this down onto it like that. And we have the beginning of our lamp. Now what we'll do is the shade. We'll go back into the left viewport. And we'll get out a let's do a box. About halfway through here and here. Give it some height, the perspective, and the X, bring it over to here, where it's supposed to be, zoom in on it, with Z, like that. If you want to scale it a little bit, you can. I'm actually going to have it on this side, just like that. Okay, convert it to an editable poly. Select this polygon, select this polygon, and delete them. And what we'll do is we'll come to the modifier list, hit S a few times to get to shell. And that puts, it makes it a box, but it, it hollows it out for us. We'll bring the outer amount down, like so. We'll call this lampshade, and we'll collapse this. All right. We'll call this. We'll actually, we'll actually take this base, come down, and attach it to this part. And we want this part to stay separate. What we'll do is we'll call this lamp um, base, I guess, or support, whatever. And then we have the lamp shade. So we'll highlight these two, come to group, and call it lamp, like that. Right click, unhide all, and there we go. We'll take this, control click that, and bring it a little closer to the table. Just like that. Hit F4, and we can see what we're doing. We're getting some stuff going now. Not too bad. All right, now we're going to put this picture up here. So for the picture, which is extremely, extremely simple, what we'll do is uh, we'll just go to our left viewport. Let's come up here and get a box because it'll be kind of like a canvas picture. We don't have to worry about a frame or anything. So let's just drag out a nice little box like that. Give it some height. Come to our perspective. Zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on and see. Make sure it's not too thick, which it appears to be. For a canvas, it's pretty thick. All right, right click it, convert to editable poly, call it uh, picture. Bring up my edges so I can see. And I'm going to move this over here like so. I think this is a 45 degree angle, but I'm not sure. Make sure you have angle snaps on and just go ahead and turn it to 45 degrees and bring it in. And yeah, it is. And we'll put it right there. Lower it a little bit. So now what we have is our picture frame. We have our end tables. We have a lamp. We have this. We can put something on the coffee table yet. Um, 
I'm not sure if I really want to or not. We'll just leave it be for now. I'll let you do that. Um, yeah, we have pretty much everything covered the way I wanted it to be covered. Um, don't ask me why I just did that. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, this is our interior. Everything's been modeled that we're going to put in here. Um, fairly simple. The next tutorial will be all about texturing everything and getting it ready for the last tutorial, which will be lighting and rendering. So I hope you enjoyed this part. Stick around. Uh, we're going to start our texturing. Thanks.